Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Technotalks here. So in front of us today, we do have the Google Pixel Fold. This actually took a very long time for me to get, and one of the main reasons for that was because of the delays and also the issues that I had with my order, but I finally was able to receive it, and it did arrive yesterday at my doorstep. So I am super excited to actually check this device out. All right, starting off the packaging, we can see the Pixel Fold, and I do have it in the porcelain color. There are two colors, there's obsidian and porcelain. I did want to go with the porcelain one, usually I go for darker colored phones, and I just wanted to switch it up a little bit with the Pixel Fold. Right away we can see the design of the phone, which in my opinion looks really nice for a first generation phone, and then we also do have the Google logo Pixel Fold, and then the back portion is completely empty. So, getting the price out of the way, this does start at $17.99, so it is definitely on the pricier side of things, even compared to the, S, uh, the Z Fold 5. The Z Fold 5 is 1800 bucks as well, and so having a first generation device that goes for the same price as something on its first generation is kind of worrying, but we'll have to see, and I'll have to use this device to actually give any comments on that. So to open it up, all we have to do is pull these two tabs, and voila. And now we should be able to take a look at our Pixel Fold. So flipping this around, nothing on this side of the box, placing that to the side, here is our Pixel Fold, which looks and feels super nice already. And we also do get some information on here. So, foldable screen care, flexible screens are softer than traditional screens, blah, 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 some information like that. It's not really imp uh, important. Do not remove pre-installed screen protector. For first time users, you might want to go ahead and use, read these. But again, these are pretty basic things that we've actually been seeing for a couple years now with Samsung foldables. So, what do we get in here? So, it doesn't seem like we get anything on here. All right, and here we do get a nice little pamphlet with some reading material, which we don't need. And we also do get a nice USB-C to C charging cable with a transfer cable, which is always very useful. And I do love it when they do place these inside. So let's go ahead and put this all to the side and actually take a look at the Pixel Fold. So this is gonna be my first look and first hands-on, and I'm already loving this porcelain color, especially from the camera array. So we do have a triple camera lens. It is a little different from the Pixel 7 Pro, which I will actually get into once I do turn this phone on. But again, they should still be very nice and functional cameras, especially with the price point and also being a Google phone. So, all right, opening it up. Let's go to flip this around. I hope I'm doing this right. Boom. And here is our first look at the Pixel Fold. So, wow, this is really nice and beautiful. This is very clean, looks very nice, and wow, this this glass just feels, this device just feels completely premium. I'm in shock by how well Google has designed their first foldable device, and the form factor is a little different. And just for comparison, I do have the Z Fold 5 right next to me, and as you can see, the Z Fold 5 is a lot thinner. That's how Samsung's been doing it for a couple of years now. They've been going with the thinner design uh, compared to the thicker design, uh, like th with the Pixel Fold. So I am not sure which one I do like more. Uh, I do like holding the Z Fold 5 in its folded position, but again, the Pixel Fold does have a more traditional phone screen. So let's go ahead and place this to the side and actually get a first look at the Pixel Fold. So I'm gonna go ahead and unfold this real quick just to see what it looks like. So first folding. And wow, that feels nice, but I am already feeling something. So this actually does not fold all the way. As you can see, it does have a nice little bend. So it does not fold all the way down. And again, we do have the bezels with the pixel fold and we are already getting some fingerprints on there, but the hinge does feel very nice and sturdy, which is good to know. So it does stay in many positions. So no issues with that. And it does fold completely flat which is super nice as well. And the mechanism just feels really nice and great. So design wise, just a very nice and beautiful phone. I'm pretty sure the Obsidian one is as good as this one. The side rails just feel very nice and premium. We do have all of our buttons right here. And I believe there is a fingerprint sensor right there, but I will have to go ahead and turn it on first. So let's go ahead and power it on for the first time. And while that is happening, I'd like to talk about the cameras. So we do have a triple camera setup. We have a 48 megapixel lens and two 10 megapixel lenses. And then we also do have a eight megapixel selfie camera on the inside. Uh, and then we also do have a 10 megapixel camera on the outside if I'm not getting that wrong. 
And here is the screen for the first time. And again, this does look more like a traditional phone. So for a comparison, I'd like to go to bring up the Pixel 7 Pro right here. As you can see, the lenses, the camera array just looks very nice and similar. Uh, the Pixel Fold is just a tad bit thicker, uh, which is to be expected from a phone that is folding in half, as you can see. But overall, it still does feel very nice and premium like a Pixel device. So I'll go ahead and get this set up real quick. And once that is done, I will go ahead and check out some of the settings and talk about a little more of the specs of this phone. So let me go and get this set up real quick and I'll get back to y'all. All right, the Pixel Fold is now set up. The process was fairly simple and easy to complete, just like any other Pixel device. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and check this phone out. So right away, I can tell you that this device has already been heating up. That's mainly because of the setup and all the updates that it's doing. However, I have already heard that the Pixel Fold does get really hot and I have actually experienced that with my Pixel 7 Pro as well. So this does have the Tensor G2 chipset, just like the Pixel 7 Pro. And so we do have some heating problems with it as well. However, we do have a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, which is fairly good for a tablet of this size. So if we do go ahead and hop into our settings real quick and check out some battery settings, we do have many adaptive preferences. As you can see, we do have our adaptive charging, adaptive battery, and if we do go back, we can also show our battery percentage. So 66% currently, and I will have to go ahead and use this to actually comment about the battery life. So moving down to the display, we do have our brightness level set at 100%. And again, you do have your adaptive settings. We also do have our screen timeout, which I will go ahead and do 30 minutes. And then we also do have a screen attention setting, which prevents your screen from turning off if you're looking at it. So it does use the front camera for that. We also do have our dark theme, which I can go ahead and turn on and turn off. We have our screen saver, display size and text, night light. Uh, we can choose the colors, so it is on adaptive right now. Natural is just a little too dim, dim for me. And we also do have smooth display, so it automatically raises the re refresh rate from 60 up to 120 hertz for some content. And again, this is for the outer display as well, so not just the inner display. So we do have some very nice settings with this, and I would like to go out and show off the outer display real quick. So again, the outer display is like a normal phone, just like any other Pixel device. Uh, it's very easy to use, and it's just a very pleasant feeling, unlike the Z Fold 5, which just has this very thin look to it, which does get annoying after a little while. Having this form factor of a phone just feels really nice, and you're still able to reach every corner, uh, just like the Z Fold 5, since it's not as tall as the Z Fold 5, but it still does have a very nice uh, thickness, unlike the Z Fold 5. So. That's enough comparing for now, let's get back to it. We also do have our fingerprint settings, which I will go ahead and show you real quick. So we'll go ahead and set that up real quick. If we can do that, security and privacy, let's go ahead and see, not in here, more security settings, passwords and accounts, digital well-being, and some system settings. So for the security device lock, we do have our face and fingerprint unlock. I'll go ahead and enter my pin real quick. And now we can set up our face unlock and fingerprint unlock. So I'd like to start off with the fingerprint unlock. And for the fingerprint sensor, that is going to be on the power button. So if we do go ahead and touch and hold, touch and hold, touch and hold, it is fairly simple. So I'll go ahead and change it a little bit. All right. So move it around. So it does seem like it's working fairly well. We are having some issues. Place aside. All right, probably the right side now. Go ahead and get the right side, and we should be done. So that is the fingerprint sensor, and if we do go ahead and try that out real quick, go ahead and lock the phone, and boom. So very nice and easy, very fast as well, and boom, so voila. So very nice and easy, and it works very fast. Face unlock. That's going to use the selfie screen, so close the screen to continue setting up face unlock, and that is because the selfie camera is better on the outer display right here. So if we do go ahead and click face unlock, all we have to do is click more, more, and we'll go ahead and start. And look at the camera, and it says looks good, so done. And if we do say skip lock screen, this will just go ahead and open up the phone and require eyes to be open. So if we do go ahead and test that out, as you can see, I'll go ahead and do that once more with my finger, uh, my pointer finger so it doesn't actually read my finger. And as you can see, that is super fast as well. 
just like the fingerprint unlock. So overall a very nice device. This will probably get the job done for a lot of scenarios. However, I am kind of disappointed in the pricing of this phone. $1,800 for a phone on its first generation. I know the Z Fold was actually at around that price even more when it first came out. However, Google does have competition right now. Samsung is on its fifth generation and Google is on their first generation, so we don't know what's coming. Plus, we do have the inferior chips at the Tensor G2. Nothing wrong about it. It works perfectly fine. It gets your daily tasks done. However, I still can't call it a flagship chipset when I am comparing it to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 compared to the G2. So. Google has to improve on a lot of things. We do have 12 gigabytes of RAM, which will help out with the multitasking. And real quick, let me go ahead and show you that. So opening up the Play Store, swiping up, and putting Chrome to the side, we can see that it does go ahead and put two apps. Plus, we can actually go ahead and move it around just to show which one is more. And then it also does save it as well. So if we do swipe up, boom, here it is. So the Pixel Fold, very nice device. I actually prefer the design a lot more compared to the Z Fold 5. I don't know, it just looks more premium in my opinion. I don't know why, but Google just does the design portion really well. And then the front display also functions very well as well. And so Google is in the right path. We do have some bezels on the inside, uh, unlike the Z Fold 5. I guess we can justify them in some sense, but there is still some work to be done. And then camera wise, if we do go ahead and step into the camera app, we do have our triple lenses, so two times, five times, one times, and our ultra wide right here. And then we also do have our selfie camera. So if we do go ahead and flip it around, here is our selfie camera. And if we do go back, go into our video, we do have some video settings. So 4K, at 4K can't be used in this ratio. So if we do go ahead and close it up and hop back in, we can see that we do get 4K 60 frames of recording. And if we do switch around with our outer selfie, we do get 4K 60 as well. So Camera wise, they do work really well and they should be taking very nice pictures, just like the Pixel 7 Pro. But again, I do still feel like we do have some overheating issues with this phone. I haven't used it enough, but I have already heard about it in many articles and from many other reviewers. So Google does have some work to be done. I will go ahead and use this for a little while. Uh, I'll actually use it on and off with the Z Fold 5, just to see how which one performs better, which one functions better, and which one actually fits my lifestyle a little better. Uh, the is it the form factor of the Pixel Fold or is it the form factor of the Z Fold 5? So again, comment down below which one you like more, the Z Fold 5 or the Pixel Fold. Design wise, I am really loving the Pixel Fold. This is just perfect in my opinion. I really like the form factor, just how well and how finished it looks, how nice it looks. So Google Pixel Fold does take it for the design, but again, they still do have some things they need to work on before we can actually justify the price. I don't think the price is justifiable on any of them, but again, they need to step up their game. So that'll basically wrap it up for this video. As always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe and see y'all in the next one.